draft and big contracts. But we're going to call an audible. We're going to switch sports tonight because we've run across an absolutely amazing basketball player that we want you to see. Here's Steve Hartman. Greece Athena High School in Rochester, New York, has a new most unlikely hero, a special ed student by the name of Jason McElwing. Let's keep it going. Jason is the basketball team manager. For the past couple years, he's been assisting coach Jim Johnson, helping with whatever the team needs. Get him more than out water and this enthusiastic. Enthusiastic to say the least. Despite being born with autism, Jason's father says his son has never had a problem expressing himself at basketball games. You know, I was always concerned that he might get a technical when they lose a game because he, you know, start yelling or whatever. Let's have a hard practice tomorrow. All hour and a half. And let's get ready for Arcadia. Okay. Let's go. One, two, three, two. Because he has been so devoted to the team, for the last game of the season, Coach Johnson decided to let Jason actually suit up. Not to play necessarily, just to let him feel what it's like to wear a jersey. At least that was the plan. But with four minutes to go in last week's game, Coach Johnson stood up and pointed to number 52, Jason McElwain. After years of fetching water and toweling off other people's sweat, Jason was actually in a game. His first shot was a 20-footer from the right baseline. Was it close? Did you almost make it? I just airballed it. <laughs> I'm like, just, dear God, please, let's just get him a basket. His second shot missed, too, but the third was a chunker, a three-point no-doubter. And Jason wasn't done yet. Not by a long shot. If I wasn't there to witness it, I wouldn't have lived it, you know. He caught fire. I just caught fire. I was hot as a pistol. Jason ended up shooting six three-pointers. One right after the other. He had 20 points total. And each time a shot went in, his teammates and the crowd went a little crazier. His last basket, right at the buzzer, created total mayhem. Because he is autistic, Jason says he's used to feeling different, but never this different, never this wonderful. Steve Hartman, CBS News, Rochester, New York. it went viral and now if you look at in YouTube there's like different versions of it but in total it has more than a million um, views so why why do you think is that why do you think it was that popular that a video that was like randomly uploaded on YouTube got so many so many views networks, networks? Can you speak? Can you hear from there? Yes. And like you don't see those kind of things like every day, and so it's something. All right. Well, all of you are right, and this story um, actually is a really good example because it um, exposes very clearly the six ingredients that make a story successful, and I'm going to share those with you. Uh, so the first one is simplicity. The story is about an autistic boy that scores six three-pointers at a high school, and no one really was expecting this, right? Um, and it's a very simple story to tell. Like, if you left here today, I'm sure you, tomorrow you can still tell your friends, oh, I saw this video of this autistic guy who, in a basketball game, managed to score six three-pointers, or something along those lines. So it's very simple to remember. The second one was mentioned uh, several times, and is unexpectedness. 
no one expects maybe an autistic boy to be able to achieve this and, and still they find it hard to believe, which links to the third um, principle, which is concreteness. You can still see he, he scored victory pointers. You saw the video, so it's real. It's not, no one made it up. You can see it by yourself. And number four is credibility. It's a credible story. There's evidence. Um, you can verify it. Number five is emotions. And it's a story that really links to us from an emotional perspective. And ultimately, those are the stories that stick with us for the longer term, those that manage to um, get ourselves from, get, get to us from an emotional perspective, not just facts or just raw data. And number six, the reason also why it got so far is because it's a story. And no, not all our messages can be packaged in a story. But the ones that tend to stick with, in people's minds are the ones that are. So always when you are telling someone something, try as much as you can to present it in a story uh, format. Because you're going to have like, better chances of them remembering what you, what you said. So in summary, uh, to make it easier to remember, just remember success, which stands for simplicity, unexpectedness, concreteness, credibility, emotions, and story. You get that? OK, that was pretty fast. Um, those are the main six ingredients. But there's also three different angles that you can use to tell a story. And I'm going to show you two more videos that will be examples of um, those angles that I'm mentioning. First one is this one. Have you heard of William Kabamba? No? I think Yoka mentioned him yesterday in her presentation. But here you go. and I'm from Malawi and the economy of Malawi most of them will depend on farming yeah we depend on tobacco <laughs> I'm 20 years old now my village of course uh, are 60 families and my family we are about 20 I was dropped out because I didn't my parents have no money to pay me a school fees and uh, a school fees is uh, eighty dollars. We have enough wind in Malawi and I, I was thinking well, what can I do to use that wind so that we can have something. That's why I decided to read some books about the windmills. The first time I saw a windmill in the book, they just come up with the Drink the, come up with the pictures, but they didn't say anything what you can do to build that room so that you, you can generate electricity or you can pump water. You figured that out on your own? Yeah, I figured out on my own. If this room is in this book, if, uh, if I can try, maybe I can make money so that I can have electricity in the home. The time I was set to build a windmill, I was uh, 14 years. Uh, it took me uh, um, about uh, two, two months to build the uh, first windmill. They couldn't believe that I would make something to generate electricity. What makes uh, <coughs> people to start realizing that uh, this thing is uh, useful when you uh, power a radio? Wait, was it music that was on the radio? Uh, it was uh, a local Malawian make in USA. <laughs> and most of the people, they didn't know what I'm doing. They thought that maybe I'm, I'm going mad and uh, uh, maybe I'm crazy. And uh, I didn't see them as much support on the first time, but after I've built a little in me, so when some people start to realize that, oh, maybe this is the useful thing, maybe it should help him, yeah. I'm 
then the ring may be in the knowledge from this book. And I said, uh, yes, oh, okay. I'll come to your home so that I can see. And uh, the guys came with some journalist and write uh, like, uh, an article about the windmill. Like this. I took uh, a tractor, a tractor fan. <laughs> well, first off, when you see these enormous windmills, what are your first impressions? Uh, from a photograph in a textbook, William built a windmill. This is a story that uh, that is uh, should be shouted from the rooftops. My dream is to finish my education and uh, in the future to start my own company about the windmills. Most of the people, they want technology about the internet technology, but they will not use the internet technology without electricity. That's what I'm planning to do, is to come up with the reliable electricity. Yeah, that's what I'm planning to do. to teach children what happens when prejudice goes unchecked. We're a community of 1,600 people. We really have no diversity. The Ku Klux Klan was founded only about 100 miles away. One of the hardest things for them to comprehend was that Hitler murdered 6 million Jewish people. A student said, what is 6 million? I've never seen 6 million. In the 1940s, people were privileged to represent the people who were in the Holocaust at that time. And we all said, this is the idea. It began in a school. Can we write letters to some people and see if they'll send us some paper clips? Spread to a town. The whole community is involved in it. The attached paper clip is in memory of my grandfather. 25,000 pieces of mail. Something's going on over here. Across the nation. I'm sending you one paper clip. We have some from Tom Hanks, Bill Cosby, former President Bush. And throughout the world. I bet you're just coming in by the million. So I'll address your hand. This is Anne Bryant. <laughs> I can't get over that. I don't think it had ever occurred to them that there were people in this world who never knew their grandparents. I was in Auschwitz for three years, and I'm glad that I can come and talk to you nice people. If we have made such a big difference, think what the rest of the world can do. They tried. I wish the whole world was like you are. Angles. Um, For those who didn't participate, a couple of quick messages. Okay. 
First of all, we have some sweatshirts for sale downstairs in the lobby for anyone that feels like they need one to deal with this cold weather. And following this short break will be another Global Village meeting. Another Global Village meeting after this break. Thank you. Okay. So most inspirational stories that we tend to remember um, follow three common plot lines, okay? The first plot line is a challenge plot. So when someone overcomes a very difficult challenge or, or triumphs um, over adversity. So remember, challenge, okay? That's the number one. The number two is creativity. When someone comes up with a very brilliant solution um, or something truly really out of the ordinary. Um, think, for example, um, of social entrepreneurs that are very innovative and create new solutions for social problems. So, creativity. And the third one is the connection plot. So, when someone makes an unlikely connection with someone else. So, challenge, creativity, and connection. Yeah? You got it? So, we saw three videos. Can you guess which one is it? Ideas? So for example, let's start with the autistic boy. Which one do you think it is? Is it a challenge? Is it creativity or is it connection? Challenge, it can be connection. Okay. Yeah, challenge is probably the, the strongest one. Now, it doesn't mean that in a story you can have only one. Sometimes you might have more than one uh, plot line. But certainly challenge uh, is a very strong one on the autistic boy video. Then William Cabamba's video, the, the boy that built the creativity. creativity. Perfect. And the last one, connection? Perfect. Now, perfect is also an example of a creativity plot. So this shows you how you can use the different ones. And you can always tell any single story from this different angle. So for example, you could tell, um, you could tell the autistic boy story from a connection perspective. And you can choose which one you make stronger. And even all of your stories and the stories of your projects, you can choose which of the plot lines is the best suited for your story and put the emphasis um, in that. The reality is that there's never one story. Even for ourselves, our own, the story of our own lives, we can tell it in many different ways. Okay? So we don't have much time left, but before we leave, I want you to try the following. Can you think of your own project, the one that you uh, brought to Jean? and think whether it involves someone overcoming a great challenge or if it involves someone being creative and coming up with innovative solutions or if it brings together people who are normally worlds apart. And can you come up with two or three sentences to tell the story of your project using at least one of these plot lines? We've got like five minutes. When you do that, remember also the, um, the six elements that I mentioned before. Simplicity, unexpectedness, concreteness, credibility, emotions, and story. So think of the three plot lines and the six ingredients, and how you can use that to tell the story of your project. Yes, so it's based on your project. So if you met someone on an elevator and you had three minutes to tell them what your project is about. If you met someone in the elevator, you wouldn't have three minutes. How would you do it? What? So if you met someone yes. in the elevator and you had to tell them in three minutes, no, like if you met someone in the elevator, you wouldn't have three minutes to tell them. Mm -hmm. Story. Story. Simplicity, unexpectedness, completeness, credibility, emotions, yeah. and story.
Go to the YouTube channel. Oh, they're up.